Slow websites suck, and I'm gonna show you how to make your website load up to 80% faster using these top tips. Most of them are free, and all of them are easy. I am Jack with Jack in the Net. Welcome to the video. Please subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit that like button, and turn on the notifications. Now, let's dive in. Tip number one is to disable pingbacks and trackbacks. Pingbacks and trackbacks alert you whenever your blog or page receives a link. Now, that sounds useful, but tools like Google already do it for you anyway. Um, keeping pingbacks and trackbacks on can also really drain your server resources, and it's how a lot of attackers basically target you, and it's not good for your website. So, what we want to do is come over here to WP Admin, go to Settings, go to Discussion, and then just deselect the allow link notifications from other blogs. So that's your pingbacks and trackbacks. Turn that off, and that's tip number one. Tip number two is to move your scripts to the footer. Now, there's a really easy, free and simple plugin that can do this. If we go over to our plugin section and click on Add New, we just want to search for scripts to footer. And it's this one here. Okay, so move scripts to the footer plugin. Um, just install this and activate it. And it just works. You don't need to do anything else. It just works straight off the bat. And that now means that they're not going to be loading straight away. So again, it's just perceived speed. It's only maybe half a second or a second in it, but every little bit counts. Tip number three is enabling gzip compression. Now, gzip compression is how you can keep your files in their smallest possible state. It's supported by all of the major web browsers that there are. And if you're using a decent web host or a proper caching plugin, then it's probably going to be on your website for you. But just in case it isn't, it's best to check. So the way we do that is head on over to good old Google and search for giftofspeed.com forward slash gzip hyphen test and there we go so what you can now do is enter your website let's do mine jackinthenet.com and that's now going to test to make sure that it is enabled okay mine's actually using Brotly, so it's uh, sort of set up for the next gen of speed compression uh, but just run your site through that test uh, and obviously, if it isn't on there for you, then you really want to be looking at getting yourself a proper caching plugin or switching hosts so that it's automatically done. There is code that you can actually add to your own uh, root folders, but I'm not going to actually show you what it is. I know that's annoying, but the problem is if you do it and get it wrong and it then breaks something, you're going to blame me. So just look it up. You can search for it easily on Google. It'll show you what that code is. Um, you can just put in enable gzip. Uh, but I wouldn't do that if I were you. So just use a proper host or caching plugin and it's going to do it for you. That brings us on to tip number four, using a quality caching plugin. Okay, now there are free caching plugins that do a pretty good job. There's things like W3 Total Cache. Uh, however, just be aware that they do clash with some web hosts. For example, SiteGround, my personal favorite when it comes to web hosting and many other people's as well, they will only pair up with certain caching plugins. Now, the best free one is the one that they offer themselves. It's the SG Optimizer. I have a whole video tutorial showing you how to use that. Put that on and it's gonna help websites caching your content so that it loads more quickly for your website visitors. What it is worth doing though is investing in a premium caching plugin and the very best one that there is is WP Rocket, okay? Pretty much all WordPress experts agree that WP Rocket is the best one. You can get it by going over to Jack in the net forward slash rocket. Okay, and for the price of $49, um, $39 if it's on offer, just for one single site license, it's really nothing for what you get. Okay, it's gonna massively speed up your website. It is well worth the investment. That brings us on to tip number five, minifying your JavaScript and CSS. Now, this is something that comes up if you ever run your uh, site through a page speed test. So GT metrics, 
ping dom um, google page speed is pretty much always going to come up with things like minify css uh deferred JavaScript, you know, parsing, minification, it's all going to come up. And for people that don't know what it means, it's like, how do I deal with this? So that, again, is what a quality caching plugin is going to do for you. Um, WP Rocket will do it. Uh, however, if you want a free option or a freemium option, I think they also have a paid version as well. It is auto-optimize. Okay, so you can install that, and again, it's going to do the same thing for you. It'll minify your JavaScript and CSS, and that's going to help condense everything down for you, make it smaller, make it load more quickly. Number six is optimizing your database. Now, your database can get clogged up with silly things, okay? Stuff like old blog posts and drafts or spam comments, okay? Expired transients, these silly little things that you're not really going to think twice about, but they do uh, clog up the website for you is going to make it slower. So you want to optimize that. Now, again, WP Rocket has that in built. It's really simple for you to do it. Um, if you have WP Rocket, I'll just show you. You can come over uh, to here, come on down, click here, go on in, and there you go. There, there are your options so that you can actually do that, optimize your database. Um, there is a free option. So if we head on over to the plugin repository, and we want to find WP Optimize. Okay, and that is a completely free version that you can use it for. So just run that. It's going to clear the database for you. Just one thing here, make sure that you do a backup for your website first, because if you accidentally do get rid of something that you didn't mean to, then you can obviously just roll it back. But uh, no, that's a really good one. And again, keep that database optimized. Don't let it clog up. It all helps with website speed. Tip number seven, don't keep plugins active the whole time. Now, a really good example of that is what I just told you, something like WP Optimize that you would use for optimizing your database. You don't need that active the whole time, okay? Maybe you're gonna use it once a month, once every six weeks. So turn it on, use it, and then when it's done its job, deactivate it again. Doesn't mean you need to delete it, just deactivate it. And then again, it's keeping everything really nice and, and clean and simple, okay? It's all organized. And when it's not switched on, while it's not doing anything, it's not gonna be using up any of your server resources, okay? So deactivate plugins when they're not in use. Number eight, delete or replace underperforming plugins. Okay, so building on from that last tip, you want to be getting rid of plugins that just aren't working for you. Okay, some are not the same as others. Now, the biggest culprits for this are your e-commerce plugins, okay, um, your SEO plugins, and also security plugins. So some are better than others. Now, obviously, if you're using something like WooCommerce, yes, it's going to slow down your website, but it's pretty much the best one that there is. That said, if you're only doing things like digital downloads, you might want to be looking elsewhere. So what are you selling? Think about that with your e-commerce systems and exactly how many add-ons you've got built into that. Because let's face it, things like WooCommerce, there are so many different add-ons, only use the things that you actually need. SEO, the, the two leaders in the field are Yoast SEO and Rank Math. Now, maybe you want to try out both of them, see which one your site performs best with. And then you've got security plugins. Now I'll pop a uh, link in the description below. That'll take you through to one of the best security plugins that there is on the market for WordPress. And again, it's just gonna keep things light for you and it's not gonna weight down your site too much. But those are the three main areas where plugins tend to underperform. So just be watchful for that. Be ruthless and get rid of anything that isn't working at the optimum level for you. Tip number nine is image optimization. Okay, we all love images on a website. After all, what is uh, the saying? Um, an image is better than a thousand words, something like that. Well, images are great, but they also slow down a website. For example, pretty much a whole page of text. Let's say it comes to maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 gigabytes, something like that. You put in an image straight away, even if it's optimized, it is that much. Okay, so yes, your thousand words pretty much is the equivalent of an image on your website. So you have to optimize them. 
Now, a free tool you can use for that if you want to do it manually is Google's Squoosh app. Um, I have a video, I'll pop a link in the description below and a card on the screen. You can click through and see how to do that really, really easy. Uh, otherwise, the best plugin for that is the Optimal plugin. Okay, again, if we head on over to the uh, repository and search for Optimal, you will find it there. So simply install that. There is a free version and there is also a paid version. But for most people, the free version is going to be more than enough. So do that. You've got the option to have either lossless or lossy image compression. And when you do that, it's really going to help to reduce those image sizes on your website. And that is going to speed things up for you probably more than pretty much anything else on this list. That brings us to tip number 10, use SiteGround web hosting. Okay, not all web hosts are the same. And believe me, I've been doing this for quite a few years now and I've used lots of different web hosts. I've used the likes of GoDaddy, I've used HostGator, I, I've used loads of them. And they're awful, they really, really are. Okay, I, I should probably say here for legal reasons, that is my personal opinion only based on my own personal uh, you know, experiences, but I absolutely hate them. SiteGround, on the other hand, give you really easy integration. They give you a beautiful um, back end. So your cPanel looks fantastic. Look at this. I mean, this is SiteGround's cPanel. It just looks fantastic. Um, it's really easy to do everything. They do automatic backups for you daily. They give you uh, free SSL certificates. Um, they give you the caching plugin if you go for their middle plan upwards. And it's really cheap, okay? You get 70% off your, your first initial purchase. I'll put the link in the description below for that. And they're just so fast. They are the fastest web hosts, um, and they give you such brilliant customer support as well. I know this is a, this is a sales pitch, isn't it, basically? But it's, it's true, okay? It's one of those times where just invest that little bit in getting yourself a proper hosting it pays dividends, it really does, okay? You'll be very pleased that you've done it. Um, if you use my affiliate link, I get a small commission. If you do buy SiteGround's web hosting, um, I'd really appreciate that because it helps me make these free tutorials. But even if you don't want to and you just go and get it yourself, that's absolutely fine, but you should do because it is the best web host. So do that, it's gonna be a big speed saver for you. Tip number 11, use a fast WordPress theme. Okay, WordPress themes are not all the same. They can be fantastic and there are, let's face it, so many out there. However, some are much, much faster than others. Now, make sure to subscribe because one of my very next videos is going to be comparing the top WordPress themes for speed. And believe me, there are some surprises in there. So subscribe and turn on that bell so that you get notifications. Otherwise, you're not gonna see the new video come up in your subscription feed. And last but certainly not least, number 12, a bonus tip for you, disable hot linking. Now, I won't blame you if you don't know what this is. Hot linking is where somebody can take an image that you have posted on your own site and then repost it on theirs. However, they can do it coming from your own website. So basically it's using your server resources, not theirs. Now, there have been cases where big websites have actually done this and it crushes your website, the smaller website, destroys your server resources and gives you a massive bill. So it's actually quite worrying. Now, it's easy enough to get rid of it. Uh, if we head on over here to uh, Cloudflare, they give you a free content delivery network. Um, there are other CDNs available, but they're free. So we'll go with that for now. Uh, for example, if you go into their Scrape Shield settings, that allows you to turn off hot linking, okay? Um, so that's the best way of doing it. CDNs offer it for you. I will post a link in the description to an article that goes into details. It also shows you a couple of other CDNs you can use, and that way you can disable hot linking, and that is also gonna speed up your website whilst also protecting you, saving your server resources, and potentially stopping you from getting a very unexpected and unfair bill. And there you have it. Those are the 12 top tips for you on speeding up your website. Most of those were completely free. All of them are really, really easy to implement. I hope that they help you. Please post on in the comment, especially about any that you weren't aware of before. Make sure to hit the like, 
hit subscribe, and thank you ever so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.